guys, I am so excited to be making this video. I have three of my wonderful YouTube Marine friends. We have Marine from Marine's Science Cafe here. We got Telly from Telly's Marine Tales, and we got Maria from Sea and Me. So you guys may have seen Maria and me. Uh, we did a collaboration a couple of years ago now when I was actually in Austria. But uh, considering most of us are on some form of lockdown and all across the world, we decided to do an online version. So not only have we made a video for this channel, we've also made videos for each of their channels. On their channels, we're playing some hilarious games. If you want to see me make a fool out of myself and put some uh, snorkeling equipment on while chilling out in the evenings, highly recommend you check out their videos. My video, I decided to do a little bit different. I didn't do a Zoom call, but instead I chose to ask them some questions, which I get a lot from you guys, and just generally from people who want to get involved in marine science or taking care of our ocean, ocean conservation. Since I remember, I really loved whales and dolphins. And I always kind of wanted to work with whales and dolphins, even though I did not really know what that meant. But I think the time when I started saying I wanted to become a marine biologist was after I started watching a TV show called Ocean Girl, where there was a marine biologist working with humpback whales. And when I saw that, I thought, that's what I want to do. Actually, I grew up on a sailboat. I don't think I wanted to be a marine biologist per se. I wanted to be a biologist. And I eventually did an internship on bottlenose dolphins in Normandy in France. And I spent a lot of time at sea. And it's when I ended up going at sea on the boats. I, I just became overwhelmed with these probably feelings that I used to have when I was a child at sea. It's Working there for a few months was kind of like a slap in the face. It was almost like a wake-up call. Like, why are you not working at sea? For me, this is a very easy answer. I knew ever since I can remember that I wanted to be a marine biologist ever since I was like six years old. I love the ocean, I love being on the beach, um, and I knew I wanted to be a scientist working with the ocean. Prior university, I didn't really do anything specific for marine biology besides reading a lot of books and watching a lot of documentaries. But then I studied biology uh, in my bachelor and then I continued on with the master's in marine ecology. After that master's, I went to Vienna where I worked for one year as a technical assistant in the lab in a microbial oceanography group. And during that year, I also started writing a project for applying to PhD grants. Once my project was funded, I started my PhD. This was in the beginning of 2016. And this week, I finished my PhD. So that's exactly where I am right now. <laughs> for me, again, that was very easy because I knew from the start what I wanted to be and what I wanted to do. So at school, I took the right subjects. I got good grades. I knew what university I wanted to go to. When I got into university, I did my undergrad and my honors. Again, I worked really hard, got good grades so that I could get a good master's project. From my master's project, that led me onto my PhD project. Um, so I became a doctor in marine biology. And yeah, now I'm doing a postdoc research contract so I essentially followed the traditional academic route. So I started my bachelor's degree in biology a little bit late. I had already worked as a professional photographer. I had worked as a professional rock climber. Worked as a professional rock climber. Being a biologist was kind of like, like a childhood dream to me. So I just decided to go back to university to do that. And when I went to university with that in mind, with the idea of becoming a biologist, I was really, really motivated. So not only did I work really hard, but I knew that I needed my resume to be unique. And so immediately, right off the bat, right off the first year, I started volunteering in labs I networked a lot. I would go talk to the professors after lectures. I would ask them questions and so they knew me and then eventually when opportunities arose I would I would often be in 
um, in, in front of the list because they knew who I was. I'm, I am now doing my PhD in the UK. So most of you guys actually know my journey. And while I always wanted to work with the ocean, I didn't study marine biology. I studied physics and then did a postgraduate in education. So education and teaching has always been a massive part of what I love doing. And during my university years, I actually worked as a scuba diving instructor for majority of that time. So that combination of teaching, diving, and science just brought me to this place where I just wanted to share my love of the ocean and science and working forwards to protecting it. And I think Maria and I share this passion of science communication and really wanting to work more on platforms such as YouTube to help, you know, everyone get a better understanding and access to why our oceans are so important, uh, the science behind what's going on, and how we can help as individuals. Since I've just finished my PhD, I've basically just been working on my PhD, which was trying to understand the interaction between bacteria and plastic pollution in the ocean. And because I'm still kind of analyzing data that I collected during my PhD, I consider that I'm still working on this topic. I also do some science communication on Instagram and here on YouTube. So I am working on stingrays, which are like these guys. Um, so we actually don't know much about stingrays in the ocean. So I'm studying their movement patterns along the South African coastline, which is where I live. I'm currently doing a PhD, exploring and testing genetic methods to see if they can be used to prevent fraud in the seafood industry. So it's, a, it's almost like forensics applied to fisheries in the seafood industry. And I'm also working as a consultant part-time for an NGO, Oceana, and I'm working with them on anything that has to do with trying to fight illegal fisheries around the world. Right now I work part-time at a high school as a high school teacher and I also do this stuff. So I've been lucky enough to be able to make some income from my podcast, the Ocean Pancake Podcast, where I talk to incredible scientists and experts from all over the world. If you haven't checked out the podcast, highly recommend uh, you check it out. I do have an episode with Maria and I'll be inviting these wonderful ladies as well to chat more about their fields of specialty. I also do have a Patreon, so if you do want to help support the work I'm doing, which is the science communication and just, you know, sharing my love of the ocean with you guys, uh, it would mean the world to me if you join the family on Patreon. Head on over there, we have a good time. There's lots of behind the scenes videos and footage and full length videos and things I can't upload onto YouTube, as well as just uh, uh, a lot of fun chats. I guess for sure the people I get to meet and the places I get to visit, but also the challenge. So if there's one thing that being a researcher and a marine biologist is not, is boring. You are constantly challenging your knowledge, challenging your abilities and challenging yourself. And I personally really like that. As much as I love the fieldwork aspect of being a marine biologist, being able to go out into the ocean, my favorite part of being a marine biologist is actually being able to be a scientist and going through the whole scientific protocol. Having a question, trying to find the answer to that question, analyzing your data and interpreting your results, the whole scientific process, I love using my brain in that way and that's actually my favorite part of the job. Originally, my favorite thing about my job was the outdoors experience. I want to do research because I know it has some sort of impact on the world. Uh, for me to do something just because I love it was, it wasn't enough. And so I kind of reoriented towards a field where there's a lot less field work. If anything, there's pretty much no field work at all. It's mostly computer work and, um, and computer work and lab work, but what I do now is a lot more applied to, re to the real world, to real world problems. And I've, that, that is now what I'm 
really, really like about my job is that I know it has a concrete impact. So just like Maria, I am so grateful for the opportunity to talk to so many fascinating and inspiring people. Oh, I'm being covered by ants. Ooh. <laughs> um, that's my favorite part really, is being able to talk to these amazing humans and yeah, sharing that with you guys and getting to go out on the boat and film amazing sights, which kind of helps empower or it helps like strengthen the message because every time we get into the ocean, Oh, we get reminded of what we're working for and what we need to protect. I kind of have to say insecurity because usually, at least well, in the environments I've been circulating in until now, most of marine biology projects and scientific projects in general, unless you work for a company, are funded through grants and grants usually don't last longer than two, three, and if you're very lucky, four to five years. So I think um, this kind of never knowing where you will be in uh, two or three years from now and this insecurity that comes with it, also the, the having to think about getting money for the next years constantly is probably my least favorite part about this job. Um, that's definitely has to be the job, the lack of job security. So it's very difficult to find a permanent position in the marine biology field. Usually you're working contract jobs and you don't know when and if you're going to get another job. So lack of job security for me is the biggest downfall. I don't have any least favorite thing about my job. <laughs> what I like the least maybe is the lack of time, is that I feel continuously frustrated about not being able to learn as much as I want or write as much as I want or do all the analysis I need to do because I continuously have things bombarding me from all over the sides. There is just so much work. There My least favorite part of the job, I think the girls summed it up pretty well. It Right now I'm very interested in trying to build bridges between the scientific community and the non-scientific communities. I feel like a lot of the cool research that people do in science sometimes never really leaves the science sphere. And I think it's such cool science, sometimes it's very important and I think it should be, you know, shout, shouted out into the world. Um, and I feel like, you know, helping this process a little bit. That's also why I started my YouTube channel during my PhD. I would also love to incorporate more diving in my uh, future works because I miss it very much. I'm not actually too sure. Um, I'm not too sure whether I want to stay working in the academic field, sort of working for a university as a lecturer or professor or something, or if I want to work more in the NGO sector and the conservation-based applied science. I've worked in both, I love working in both, so I suppose whatever opportunities come my way, I'll probably go in that direction. I really want to be able to have a job that um, works toward making a difference and towards changing things in the world for the best. So if you can t in, in academia, so if you work in a research group, uh, if you continue on the research career path after a PhD, you usually continue on with the postdoc and ultimately the, 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 the thing you really want to become is a professor and have your own research group. That's like the ultimate part, ultimate phase of your career. There are other jobs within academia you can have. You can have a tech, you can be a technical diver, for example, that help people collect samples from the field. You can be a technical assistant, a lab manager. All these people that are not necessarily the ones, you know, doing all the producing all the data and writing papers, but that assist them in some way. You can then there's for sure other jobs outside academia which I'm not so familiar with because that's not an environment I have been much in. But, for example, you can work as a science communicator in NGOs, for example, or any other company that requires science communicators, not only NGOs. You can work in NGOs as a biologist, as a consultant, 
Uh, you can work for, for the government. Sometimes there's a lot of uh, envir uh, environmental programs that the government, uh, local governments or national governments put out that require someone with some knowledge in the marine environment to participate. So I'm sure there's many jobs out there. Um, it's a, a marine biology is a quite a wide field. And yeah, I, if you're looking for one, I wish you all the best of luck. So actually in today's day and age, there's a lot of variety of jobs uh, if you love the ocean. So I mean, the traditional path is to do your PhD so you can go into academia. But today there's so much else you can do. You could become a scientist working for the government or for NGOs in conservation. You could go more into the volunteerism sector where you sort of lead dives or snorkels or whatever and you teach people about the ocean. You could become an environmental consultant. You could become a science communicator. There's, there's a lot of options out there currently and it is growing. So you just kind of have to put yourself out there and see what is the best fit for you. If you have a policy background, it's even better because they do target often politicians and they do a lot of lobbying. So um, obviously it's better to have that kind of experience, but it's not necessary. And you can also work for the government. Um, there's a lot of governmental entities that hire marine biologists to do research, to do surveys. So that's another possibility. The difference between academia and working for the government is that the research you work on isn't necessarily what you want to work on. Um, it's the research that the government wants you to work on. Whereas if you're in academia, you work on what you, whatever you want. So there's always a trade-off. Jobs can you guys do? I think the girls kind of summed it up. There's a heap of things that you can get involved in. I think the biggest piece of advice I can give you is just see what there is in your local area. Uh, protecting our oceans and marine conservation. You don't need to get started necessarily on a dolphin project or whale project. You can get started in any volunteering in your hometown. Um, thanks for listening. And if ever you want more information, don't hesitate to contact me or visit my channel. Thank you all for being here in Kat's channel. This was awesome. And yeah, I was fun. Thank you, Kat. Thank you for inviting me. Hope to see you in Australia soon. So yeah, that was our little video. Please let me know what you guys think and I would love to hear your stories. What is your journey? Where are you at? What is your plan for the future? Have you considered being a marine biologist or are you an ocean conservationist or a scuba diver? Tell me down below, would love to hear from you guys. Also, of course, head out and check out their channels, check out their videos. Uh, it's been so amazing to be able to do this, even from across the world, uh, having this amazing online community. So head on over, check that out. Thank you guys so much for being patient with me as well. I know I have not been around for a little while. I took a bit of a break over the Christmas period. I was, as I said, I was feeling a little down and unmotivated, but I am back and ready. Uh, I'm just about finished editing a video all about my 10 days on um, a sailing boat on the Coral Sea. So I'm very excited. I'll be publishing that next Wednesday. So make sure your bell notifications are on. And yeah, let me know if there's anything else you wanna hear from me. Uh, hopefully this new camera setup is also okay. Let me know, got a new lens, got a new microphone. So fingers crossed that everything worked out all good. Anyway, see you in the next video. Thank you so much for all your support and keep on living that turquoise life.